Attempting to make a magic keyboard for the iPad Mini 6 is ambitious. Why Apple never released one for the Mini 6? One company said, and I quote, hold my beer. That company is Doku. Hello and welcome back. I am your host, VLD. Let's get started. The iPad Mini 6 is my favorite go-to device. I have a keyboard for you today from a brand called Doco. Their magic keyboard right now you can pick up off Amazon for $100. If they are out of stock, I will list their official website down below where you can pick it up. This device will not disappoint. This one is made out of aluminum and this boy is heavy. Inside the box, you have the instructions alongside a USB Type-C to type a cable right off the bat this does weigh 533 grams compared to my ipad mini 6 that weighs around 500 grams so already this is quite heavy this product is made out of aluminum and it feels nice to the touch this is a very solid device on the right side you do have the usb type c charging port it does charge with type c to type c this is a fantastic device to hold they really outdid themselves with the build material this thing feels super premium. No other case I have reviewed feels quite this nice. You have four rubber stoppers on top. When the lid is closed, the iPad screen doesn't get scratched. The original Magic Keyboard I reviewed can bend back further. The build material was a soft ABS classic. You do have better viewing angles just because you can tilt it back further. The Doco version can only open up about 45 degrees. Just because the keyboard is aluminum, the sides have have been sanded down so they're smooth like what you expect from Apple with their devices. There are no sharp corners. I have a magnetic field viewer which translates to I am able to see all the magnets inside a product. The first Magic Keyboard couldn't really hold up the Mini 6 too well. You have magnets all around the case. It seems to have an extra magnet on the right side. The issue with the general setup is you need to cover the whole back to support it like the premium keyboard. It does does this because the back is flat, it doesn't bend, it works well that way. Here, just because the back kind of bends, it doesn't offer complete support. It slumps a little bit more. I do feel as if the magnets are a little bit stronger here. At the same time, they are still kind of weak. You do have raised awake. Just going around the outside of the case, it does look really slick and nice. This product really complements the middle frame of the iPad. Doco is known for having quality aluminum keyboard cases. Just looking back at the original Magic Keyboard, I like the concept of it, but it was poorly executed. The magnets were weak and the iPad just kind of slumped down. At this point, it's almost impossible to get it to work perfectly. Doku seems to have partially fixed that with stronger magnets, but the iPad doesn't feel as secure as it should be. It still feels slightly loose, but at the same time, it does feel stronger. If you put any force on the bottom or the right corner, the iPad can come off. The magnets are better than the first one. It's not perfect. To put this more into a perspective, it's kind of like driving a car down the road, but with a donut arm instead of just driving with a flat tire. They did correct the main glaring issue with the first version. The iPad lines up better with the keyboard so it doesn't hang over the keys. There is a trade-off with that. You're not given much in the way of viewing angles. Once you open it up, you're kind of limited to one position. You can tilt it maybe a little bit, but not much. It's only 45 degrees once it's fully open. With it being this way, your fingers won't hit the bottom of the iPad once you're typing. It is a better design choice. I do wish they would have dropped the trackpad and just made this a typing keyboard. This would have been perfect. To connect this device is quite easy. You turn on the keyboard, you hold the power button for three seconds, hit function plus C to enter Bluetooth pairing mode, and then just connect your iPad through the settings. It's really that easy. The trackpad works as intended. It's just kind of tiny. You do have the option of turning it off. I tend to do that while I'm typing just because palm rejection isn't the best here, but all the gestures do work. I want to go on a limb and say they have a centralized pressure button in the middle just for one click instead of having one on each side like most traditional trackpads. It makes it more difficult with one finger clicking and dragging. It does work, but you do have to be patient. One finger 
gestures are kind of hard to execute. Clicking and dragging is hard. Half the time, the trackpad releases whatever you're selecting. Selecting text, click and dragging is a mixed bag. It does work about 70% of the time. Like when you're clicking and dragging an image, it feels like someone on the other end is pushing against you. Pinch to zoom works. It does get a little bit jittery from time to time. Even in gallery, you do have native pinch to zoom. If you do move too quick, it does take the cursor an extra second to keep up. Two finger navigation does work. The corners on the trackpad with the aluminum frame, they can drag on your finger a little bit. There is a tiny gap there. Three finger multitasking works. Closing and switching between apps is a breeze. Two and three finger gestures work better than just one finger gestures. Overall, I give the trackpad two and a half out of five. It would be higher, but just one finger gestures, it's not the best. Navigating next to the keyboard, you do have a single backlit color with three levels of brightness. This would be the absolute perfect keyboard if I could swap out the trackpad for a bigger keyboard. The keys are scissor switches. You do have a chiclet style layout for the keys. This makes the perfect combination for any device, but the layout is a little bit uneven. From my review of the last keyboard, that was the gold standard for keyboard cases. On average, I can get about 50 to 60 words per minute with such a small keyboard. Just doing my normal typing tests with those keys, that layout was absolutely perfect. Unfortunately, this layout leaves a lot to be desired. The keys, because they are scissor switches, they are actually better to type on rather than the typing keyboard. Averaging out 33 words a minute, you can tell it's not the best experience. Even redoing it a couple days later, I am getting faster, only around 40 words per minute. Getting familiar with muscle memory is key with this layout. It's not perfect, but it could be better. The keys are clicky. The spacing is nice. Just how it's laid out is when it starts to fall apart. Just how everything is off center. They combine the A with cap locks. That's one button. Tab with Q is the same thing. And having three different functions for the media keys is where it loses points. The number keys are the same as the media keys. They're just so small. You have to really hunt for them. I tend to hit the power button and mistake that for the backspace. The layout is just kind of awkward while I'm typing. I misspell more than I am comfortable with and trying to remember with muscle memory more times than really needed. I have to look down at the keys. It slows me down and my typing gets really slow. Their layout is awkward while I'm typing. I misspell more words than I am comfortable with, but I have to look down and really see where they are. It slows me down and my typing becomes slower. My closing thoughts are, it's a very well designed product. The build material is hands down the best I've ever owned. The form factor is lovely. Everything right when the first one got everything wrong. The brand Doku tends to improve upon everything that they get wrong with each revision. They keep on getting better and better. I own all their keyboards. They have five or six different versions. I will eventually get all those reviews out. The first couple couple keyboard cases were just okay, but their later ones are miles better. I feel as if the first generation aluminum magic keyboard is a mixed bag. They got the design right, the materials down perfectly. Unfortunately, just with the off-center keyboard having five rows instead of six for the keys, it really holds this device back. The keys are really pleasant to type on, but the layout is weird and kind of confusing. Combining tab with Q, caps lock with A really throws me off and the whole QWERTY layout is just weird to me. Having to hunt for keys really slows down my typing. The trackpad is nice when it does work. Unfortunately, it's not really needed here. You really have to choose. With a tablet that's 8.3 inches, you want the best trackpad or a bigger keyboard. In retrospect, the magnets they improved upon do hold up the iPad. They are are better, but they're not great. My final rating for this product is 7 out of 10. This is a purchasable product. When purchasing this, you are getting this for the form factor, the aesthetics, the build quality, and that shiny metal finish. With this metal keyboard, you do have the lackluster keyboard and trackpad. The user experience will vary. The magnetic back is better, but it's not perfect. So like always, I'm your host, VLD. Smash that bell and subscribe. Stay classy.